uh, available via a W3C node at w3.org slash tr slash void and uh, not only it is uh, being applied and, and we get a lot of feedback there uh, but also it has a significant uptake in research others are looking into that uh, how to utilize void what, what, what are the limitations and so on and so forth Essentially, what Void allows you to do is describing data sets, uh, including things like general data set metadata, you know, publisher, that's the license, and so on. Access metadata, for example, here's a Sparkle endpoint where we uh, work closely together with the uh, Sparkle working group, meaning that there is a Sparkle service description vocabulary that is perfectly aligned with Void. Structural metadata in terms of uh, logically partitioning your data set, uh, describing link sets, meaning that you can formally describe how your data set is linked with other data sets, um, and also some advice how to deploy and discover void files. The next phase we suggest is the integration phase. In, in the integration phase, we mainly ask uh, in terms of what does the interlinking really mean, and one of the questions there uh, truly is why going for the fifth star? So why doing, uh, why setting the, the links, or why applying the fourth principle, uh, the link data principle? Now imagine the following: um, you have a, a source database or source data set. In that uh, example, I'm using the central contractor registration that has a list of uh, entities. In this uh, case, uh, companies, and has a couple of has one column that talks about the city the, the entity is, is uh, located in, and I ask you to map these entities, these companies, on a, say, Google map. What would you do? Well, you would look up the uh, latitude, longitude of the respective city, so for example, Boulder in the first uh, row uh, in you know, a geomapping service, uh, Google provides that, or I'm taking here geonames as an example, and you would perfectly find the latitude, longitude there, um, and would be able to map that on Google Maps. Uh, now, the next developer comes along, and the next, and the next, and like 10,000 people doing the same stuff, essentially doing this integration step over and over again. Now, you could argue the CCR should include the latitude, longitude uh, in their data set, but, you know, they might not care, or they, they uh, it's not their core business to provide that, because for them it's sufficient to say uh, that entity is, is located in Boulder, uh, whereas geonames, actually, that's their core business to, to provide that latitude and longitude information. Now, wouldn't it make more sense if the CCR, the, the original uh, data owner there, would provide a link uh, once, they just need to do that once, and have a clear semantics, like uh, it's located in, uh, in latitude longitude, or this is the same entity, by the way, um, which would en enable everyone who uses that data to directly benefit from that link, which makes the CCR data more valuable, uh, more usable. And if the goal of the original data uh, owner is to make the data available out there uh, and, and usable out there, then it's kind of obvious, it's a no-brainer to do that kind, to invest that uh, into that kind of interlinking. Um, which leads me to the more general observation that what the linked data ecosystem really offers you is a pay-as-you-go integration. If you compare the left-hand side, the fixed overall data integration effort you find in classical systems, so all the integration effort, in fact, is uh, put on the shoulders of the consumer, what we find in the linked data setup really is a kind of split between publisher efforts, uh, mentioned uh, early on in the, in, the, in the slide before, where the publisher puts some efforts in, in the integration through setting links. Um, obviously, still there, there is a need for the consumer to, to do some of the integration, but it also opens up the possibility for third parties to um, set links, uh, including what we're doing here in the uh, lattice and a lot around the clock, um, support action sponsored by the, by the European Commission, uh, which essentially deploys um, a 24-7 interlinking platform, the Silk platform, uh, running on, on our uh, cluster, on our dairy cluster down there, and uh, including um, the support of easily generating the interlinking specifications, quality measures, and stuff like that. Uh, the sixth and last phase in the linked data life cycles, again, uh, what we call an auxiliary phase, is the use cases. 
uh, although it is uh, auxiliary with respect to uh, the technical side, it turns out that it's utterly important being able to demonstrate uh, and validate uh, the technology and the benefits of the technology in certain use cases. What we've been doing in the last year, but more than a year, um, is in <clears throat> Ireland, in the e-government domain of public sector information domain, together with uh, people from the Fingal County Council, from the local government management agency, with the Central Statistics Office, and only recently uh, in the realm of the National Cross-Industry Working Group on Open Data, funded by Enterprise Ireland, to uh, go after concrete data sources, turn it into linked data, building apps on top of that, showing that um, the linked open data really uh, offers benefits in terms of uh, economic um, opportunities, in terms of transparency, and so on and so forth. One of the examples is the so-called School Explorer that takes data from the Central Statistics Office, the Census Data 2006, and data from uh, the Department of Education and Skills, and essentially provides uh, parents a kind of guidance in terms of what, what are the available schools in a certain area. And if you look there at the lower left corner, you will also see the nearby field, which essentially is uh, the information pulled in from linked geodata, which is a wrapper around the OpenStreetMap, uh, that gives you a bit of an idea uh, what exactly uh, is related or, or close to the school you're currently looking at. Summing up, the linked data life cycles uh, is a collection of patterns or phases we identified based on our experience in linked data publishing and consumption over the past years. It consists of six phases. We suggest that these six phases are there um, that uh, have four core phases, modeling, publishing, discovery, integration, and two auxiliary phases, data awareness and use cases, which are, in our experience, very important, uh, especially from the so social and the soci sociological point of view, uh, and sometimes are neglected or not really uh, understood widely, especially if we, you know, uh, with our techie head on and, and uh, sort of neglecting or forgetting about the real world. There are a couple of sites you might want to check out, uh, which uh, provide you with further details and, and examples around that. And that was it. Thank you very much and good night.